Hey guys, welcome to the fourth instalment of Terminal, the destination of all things difficult, weird and wonderful. My name is Sarah. And I'm Emilio. We have heaps in store for today's show. Here's a sneak peek of what's coming up. We take a look at a profile of a homeless teenager couch surfing around Perth. We'll go on a journey to Gnomesville, where over 7,000 gnomes are scattered across a small town in the southwest. Then we'll emerge into Perth's growing drag culture and see what it's like to be one of these fantastic performers. We'll also be continuing our $2 short series with a wonderful drama featuring some nursery rhyme characters like we've never seen them before. Well, it looks like we'll be seeing some great stuff today. But up first we have a compelling story about young homelessness here in Perth. I guess the first thing I think of when I wake up would be where I'm going to stay the next night. My dad found all that crack and shit in my dad's room and all the drugs and stuff like that. So I left and didn't want to talk to him again. Mum, I don't get on with my stepdad and she's a bit far away. I just sort of got sick of being at home and being told what to do. I just tried to buy weed. The reason I never got a job or never found my own place was probably the weed, I'd say. Smoking weed sort of made me lazy and I wasn't really motivated at all. I didn't see a problem with my life. I was happy how I was. Psychedelics. Fuck yeah. Or the, or the meth. Either or. I like me downers, but you know what? Bit every drug, every out now. Opiates, yeah, mate. Fuck. Um, yeah, it is hard to steer away just because you know while you're homeless, all your friends are mixed up in that sort of crowd. So you just sort of, I know you see them every day. They're the people you sort of rely on to get you through. Being homeless has definitely affected me mentally. Um, Yes, you know, of course it would. You know, having nowhere to live, it puts a lot of stress on you and stuff. It's bipolar, schizophrenia, it's depression. Derelict! Oh. If I can't use a phone that I have, I'll call them on 1 800 reverse. 1 800 my dad until that runs out, and then. I don't know. I can't really do much after that. I regret not finishing Year 12. I regret leaving Shenton. I regret half the friends I've made. <laughs> I don't hope for anything. I don't dream of anything. I just... Whatever winds up happening is going to happen. Well, that was an interesting insight into the lives of homeless teens, which can often be a difficult thing to talk about. Mm, it's definitely a topic that needs to be addressed in today's culture. But still to come on Terminal, we've got an excellent live performance by local muso Matt Cow. But hey, Emilio, did you know that there's a secret colony of tiny people living in the southwest? No, I did not. What's that about? <laughs> well, it's in this next segment. We'll discover the many curiosities of Gnomesville. It's now something like about 7,000 gnomes. Well, I love them. I think it's fantastic to have something that's free, that's not run and managed and you know, risk managed to an inch of its life. That all you hear here are people laughing and giggling and going, come and have a look at this one, come and have a look at this one. To be involved in something that just makes people smile is wonderful. 
Uh, my name's Wendy Purden. I'm the manager for the Wellington Forest Colleges and Conference Centre. Namesville's really easy to find. It's about two hours from Perth and a half an hour out from Bunbury in the middle of the Ferguson Valley. I came out to Namesville about 10 years ago with my two little nieces and it was just amazing. I'd heard vaguely about it and we actually found it by accident and uh, was just amazed and they were little kids and they just fell in love with the place and I think I've loved it ever since. Namesville to me is a delightful turning back in time, recapturing your childhood joys of innocence and exploration and wonderful memories of being able to run around and be free to look at everything. Yeah. I think it really reflects the quirky nature of the people who live in the Ferguson Valley. It's a really quite an interesting group of people that live here. A lot of retired people, a lot of artists, a lot of old farmers and the melding of all of them together is a really quirky community and I think Nonesville just reflects that perfectly. And just, you know, by the way it was started and the organic nature of it, again, is part of what it is. And now, of course, it's become a huge tourist draw card to the Ferguson Valley and it's what the Valley's known for. Um, it's not everyone loves it that we are known for gnomes, but we are and, uh, and you know, it just it brings a lot of people to the area. It's interesting that the public has all put this together, just doesn't seem to be a coordinated effort. Just random and everyone's driven past and come back as we're doing now, just to put yeah. some more gnomes on the ground. It's just frivolous, it's silly, and it's great. Well, that was something magical I didn't expect to see so close to Perth. Well, we've still got a stack to get through today, including a segment where we turn the cameras around to quiz some of our crew on some weird and wacky hypotheticals. Hey, Sarah, do you think I'd look good in a dress and a pair of heels? Uh, I don't know, Amelia. Why do you ask? Well, it seems as if the performance art of drag has risen in popularity over the last few years. And we have a great doco to show about local drag queen, Hannah Conda. thinking of drag, um, I did not think of it as going to be a lifelong career. I did it once and it was just the most exciting thing that I had ever done and I loved it. And that was four years ago and I did that on a Wednesday night and it's now another Wednesday night and I'm now hosting and running the event. It's not even the fact that I'm dressed as a woman, it's just the fact that I'm on stage. It just is exciting and I love it. I initially was like, you know, doing musical theatre at school and I absolutely adored it. But um, I was this small little gay kid and I didn't feel that I fit and I wanted to, I wanted to fit and I wanted to find somewhere that felt comfortable. And then when drag came along, it's very, very spiritual for me. I found like two parts of my soul connected, like my man's part and my woman part. They came together and I just felt like it was right. Hannah to me is just an extension of the I the gay thing, but then my parents were kind of a little bit funny at the start with drag. They were like, do you want to be a woman? All those questions. And, you know, I had to explain to them it was, it's a performance art. Like, it's me doing a show, I take it off, and then I'm a boy again. It's like any artist, it's like any actor. You know, it's a costume. You know, it took them a while to get their head wrapped around it, and they thought, you know, again, it was my mum and dad wanted the best for me and they weren't sure that it would be something that I could live off and, you know, be comfortable living with. It's all good now. And then I recently, as in earlier this year, just told my grandparents about my drag career. I 
I had kept drag away from them just because I wasn't sure how they react. Um, yeah, I told them and my grandma was like swearing at the computer because she did, she's like, that's not you, fuck, it's not you, you're too pretty. And I was like, oh, thank you, Nan. And, she's, and then I showed her one photo and she's like, look, I'm just gonna be honest with you, you look fat in that outfit. So I was like, that's, a, that's all you've got to say, that's fine. <laughs> So they were, they were so happy and they loved it. And then now my nan brings me her old clothes. So, you know, I'll be rocking out nan's wares soon. But yeah, so my family's pretty supports. There are people that still to this day haven't told their parents about what they do or told their friends. You know, if that works for them, that works for them. But I'd rather be very honest about it. When I met my partner, I was very upfront and honest about it because at the end of the day, that's who I am. And if someone can't love you for that, and what's the point of having them in your life? Well, I think we'll have to head over to the court soon and check out that great show. <laughs> Definitely, Sarah. But first, we're going to go back in time to the 1930s to watch a film noir take on some of our favourite childhood nursery rhymes. Boy Blue had been found beaten to death with his own horn. My only clue was a piece of black wool on his body. My client, Little Bo Peep, a classy dame with long gams and a gaze that hits you in all sixes. Boy Blue had been keeping an eye on her sheep until his death. Now they're in the wind. My investigation started off easy as Christmas pie. The black wool led me to the haunt of a known sheep smuggler. Mary, little lamb Sawyer spilled the beans. I realized I've been played like the hey diddle diddle from the start. Any news about my lost sheep, detective? Sorry, dollface. Your sheep, along with Boy Blue's killer, are on the land. But then you know that. I'm sure I don't know nothing about nothing. My investigation led me to Mary, little lamb Sawyer. I reckon you heard of her. You must think I'm a real dumb Dora. Everyone's heard of Little Lamb Sawyer. She's wanted in every county. Did she kill Boy Blue and run off with my sheep? Yes. Oh. And three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame, and one for that little boy who lived down the lane. But you made sure it only went two ways. Sawyer didn't silence Boy Blue. You did. I did what I could, as any good shepherd or should. If I hadn't silenced little boy Blue, he would have blown his horn all the way to the coppers and exposed our Pied Piper cartel. If only Soy had managed to sell those tails, we'd be sweet as apple pie. Is there any way you could help a girl out? Sorry, doll. You've been left holding the bag. She found them indeed, but it made her heart bleed. It happened one day as Bo Peep did stray into a meadow hard by. Such a good boy am I. Well, that was a great short from writer Joshua Haynes, but now it's time for my favourite segment, Crew and A, where we put some of our crew on the spot and ask them some sticky questions. Now, Apanda, my first question will be for you. You've got the Kardashian sisters, right, and three options. You can kiss one, marry one, or my personal favourite, kill one. Hmm, I'll marry Chloe, uh, kiss Courtney, and definitely kill Kim. Good choice. Word for the wise though, when you're going for Kim, she's bulletproof here and the ass. Olivia, question for you. If every time you sneezed, would you prefer to A, change gender, or B, not be able to tell the difference between a muffin and a baby? I think I'll go with a gender one so I can try out that heli dick thing. Good call. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Tom, our floor manager. Tom, say howdy. Howdy. Now for you. If you were a superpower, a superhero, what would your power be and what would be your superhero name? Right. Well, uh, I always believe that 
money equals power. So, and given that, I'd like to be the love child of Iron Man and Batman to recreate Iron Bat. That's real interesting. How's that going to play out? Is that going to be like Junior, where one impregnates the other, or are they both going to aim for the same womb and just see what happens? <laughs> uh, not sure about that. I have to get back to we'll leave that for the next episode. Yeah. It's always great to hear from the people that make us look good. Oh, absolutely. Well, hey, it's been a great show today on Terminal. And to close, Matt Cowell and his band will be performing his great song, The Mountain. Check out the harmonica player, Groovin. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Till my whole body's bruising The change of season Watch where I'm light on me I wanna set you free Angel dust on the windscreen Fresh footprints in the sand Monkey threw up by two feet Won't have time to call him a man in the patrol the horizon, black bird flies in the sky. Cast a shadow over a sundial, stained with whiskey and dry. I wanna set you free. A two a turn and a tandem, a two people jump in the fire. One man said to the other, you know, sure a real ugly mother. Two will turn in a tandem, two people jump in the fire. One man said to the other, you know, holy man could be a liar. Now I want to set you. I want to set who? I want to set you free. It's a whole bag, cheap hat, water in the wild has upper run dry. The small so hard it's a whole bag, cheap hat, water in the wild has upper run dry. A book on the pocket, it's a gosmo wife in the air. Bear, bear blue on the ground, hello, is anyone there? I said, A book on the pocket, it's a gosmo wife in the air. Bear, bear blue. On the ground, hello, is anyone there? I said, I wanna set you. I wanna set you. I wanna set you free. When I die, when you bury me by the mountain When I die, when you bury me in a hole I don't belong till my whole body's frozen The train down season, watch the warm light on me huh. I wanna sell you I wanna sell you I wanna sell you I wanna set you free